What we have here is a small block Chevy 350. I took it in on trade. This engine is noisy and consumes oil excessively. This street strip engine has only 250 miles on a rebuild. When right, this engine should make 400 horsepower on any engine dyno. Let's tear it apart and find out what went wrong. All right, ended up getting the Chevy 350 torn apart. Ended up with five cracked pistons. Also, the camshaft is starting to go flat. All right, let's move on to testing the piston ring end gap. All right, I got my piston rings in order by cylinder. I set up three pistons to measure different heights of the piston ring end gap in the cylinders. I've got my feeler gauges ready to go. Let's go ahead and get started and measure the ring end gap. All right, we will start off with checking the top ring end gap. Sixteen thousandths is snug. We'll go about two inches down in the bore. Again, 16,000 is snug. We'll go around another inch in the bore. All right, 16 thousandths is tight. The top ring end gaps on all the cylinders ended up at around 16 thousandths and the second ring ended up at around 15 thousandths. I was checking different heights in the cylinder bores to see if the bore had a taper. All the cylinders were in good shape. I have double checked all measurements. I have ran 16 thousandths top ring end gaps on a 4 inch bore in the past with no problems. Keith Black Pistons put a recommended ring end gap at six and a half thousandths per inch bore for naturally aspirated street engines. That puts the recommended ring gap at twenty six thousandths for this engine. This is from Keith Black. Modern day piston designs locate the top ring high for improved performance. A high top ring operates at higher temperatures and require a larger ring end gap. How about that? Let's take a look at the crankshaft. All right, let's take a look at this crank. These journals don't look bad. Should be able to give it a home polish and put it back together. Let's take a look at the bearings. see some debris in there looks like the oil was dirty the clearance doesn't look way off 
All right, let's check the valve stem, see if we have any wear on the valve stem ends. Everything's looking all right so far. Check the bottom of the rockers out though. I think those are wear marks from the camshaft failing and the uh, droppers rocking. Our, the rockers are dropping and causing the wear marks on the bottom of the rocker because the cam was going flat. It's kind of interesting. Let's do a quick test and see if a piston hit a valve. We'll take this RV antifreeze and marine antifreeze and put it in the ports and see if we got a leak in one of the valves. Let's check it out. All right, looks like the valve sealed up with no bent valves. Let's check out the valve spring pressures. I'm going to compare them to a set of LS6 valve springs. I have broken in four different flat tappet cams with the LS6 valve springs with no problems. I have ran them up to 7,000 RPMs. I have plenty of valve seal to retainer clearance at 300 thousandths. The valve spring installed height is 1.750. All right, the double valve spring that was installed on the engine has 140 PSI at an installed height of 1.750. All right, we got 310 PSIs at max lift for the camshaft. Coil bind came in at 1.05, giving me 200 thousandths clearance for coil bind. Inner spring is removed to see if the valve spring pressures are suitable for breaking in a flat tap of camshaft.
All right, we got 100 PSI at 1.750 and 220 open for the valve spring with the inner spring removed. This is the LS6 valve spring. I have been using them at a 1.75 installed height. At max lift, the LS6 valve springs have an open pressure of 280 PSI. Coil bind for the LS6 valve springs came in at 1.20 given 40 thousandths clearance for coil bind. The cam is a Comp Cam's Extreme Energy 284. The cam is damaged and some of the lobes are 40 thousandths off. I will be doing a garage rebuild on this engine. I will follow the piston and camshafts manufacturer's recommended specifications. Post down in the comment section on what you think went wrong. Is 16 thousandths piston ring end gap enough? Is 140 psi closed and 310 psi open too much spring pressure for a flat type of camshaft? Will 100 psi closed and 220 open spring pressure properly break in a camshaft?